Hello guys, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. Without doubt, we are back, we are here. Hello. I'm going to be sharing with you guys our sea monsters today. This is going to be a, a, an archetype, a deck, uh, you know, strategy that has not really been affected by the nerfs directly. Though the meta might warp around it, but I think this deck might be strong. It will still kind of do what it's already doing. Like, honestly, one of its uh, better matchups was a matchup against, uh, let's say, aggro, for example. And that is kind of getting nerfed, so it kind of makes, realistically, sea monsters not as good. Uh, one of the matchups that sea monsters did kind of struggle a little bit into was mid-range decks. They're getting kind of a tweak as well, and Lux Karma, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against each other, so the changes towards that might not affect it, although it'll make Lux Karma a bit slower, if it's still an archetype that is, so that would mean that uh, sea monsters can get a little bit of an edge towards them, simply just because they've been tweaked, they've been nerfed. But the other idea now is that sea monsters can still be a strong archetype, but it's going to get changed, we're going to mix it up and the list is going to look... look a bit different and so this is what i've been messing around with it mostly looks like the same i haven't made all my full tweaks yet but as we go through a list here you're going to see that i'm running cards like uh, i've got like miss coal there the the one offs of riptide i'm running atrocity and i'm running shipwreck hoarder these are going to be some additions that i feel like the deck can get away with and maybe even some more i think some of the cards that i'm going to be looking at seriously to tweak will be the withering whales the grasp of the undying and the vile feasts these may be some cards that could be susceptible to change depending on what aggro decks look like. Although I do truly believe that there'll be an aggro deck that makes a return, makes a rise, and I would have to suspect that maybe some sort of Jinx Draven, I saw Mogwai mucking around with some things with Jinx Draven that was still pretty much a really strong aggro archetypes before. But for now, I'm going to be toying with some things. Joel Hunters is probably going to find it a lot more value now, especially since it's a creating value as well as being really good against mid-range decks and if mid-range decks start to cut you know grizzled ranger then this card slightly does get a little bit better so jaw hunters is going to be a three off for sure this is like really the miss calls is really good flavor i'm really vibing that and you know shipwreck order is just really greedy and we can get away with that it's being what control decks look like Really fun list here, like I'm really happy. I didn't get to showcase the missed call in the game coming up. I'm gonna share this one game with you guys. I'm gonna to return to Deep Monsters. If you know the meta settles and we can make some in-depth guides, if you guys are interested in that, please let me know. Leave a comment if you have any questions about the deck. And without further ado, let's go play a game. Cards like Jaw Hunters would not be as effective to keep. I think we just wanna find like our Thorny Toad and our Dead Bloom Wanderer. These are going to be cards to help boost our, you know, tempo towards getting to Nautilus. This is like okay hand. We have no way to like, unfortunately, deal with the Omen Hawk Serpent attack here. But hopefully, we can draw into something playable. Thorny Toad would be the most ideal. Fortunately, not. He'll be getting another stack onto his Sejuani, so we'll have to make do and figure out a way to deal with this. It, put, it puts him in a position where he might consider open attacking, but even if he plays slow, yeah, makes the most sense. I guess we just open up with the three mana card. It's the best use of our mana, and we're tossing cards and we're getting 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 through the mess of things. He plays a three mana dude. Hopefully we can just avoid the pilfered goods. It's a card I don't really <laughs> want to see right about now. And unfortunately enough, he didn't have it, so that's really good for us. On turn four, he wants to play like uh, Yordle Grifter. So we can just develop a bunch of units here. Probably just gonna go Dreg, maybe a Dead Blue Mondo to fill out the mana, and just play on curve. We'll float the three mana most of the time. And going wide against them is kind of useful. Of course, it doesn't really play well into things like uh, Make It Rain, but that's not my biggest concern. Yeah, he usually plays this. So we kind of want to speed race towards getting Nautilus online. This is a matchup where the faster we get to it, the easier things get. We can't really afford to play slow. I can swing with one. But most likely we don't want to do that. He plays more into make it rain. And we have no reason to be swinging at all. We can just be reacting to most of the plays that he makes. We're not really going to pressure him down with units like these ones. We're going to pressure him down with Nautilus. 
We're going to pressure him down with Terror of the Tides. And hopefully figuring out ways I can deal with elusive units is kind of important. But I can no way afford to drop a Vengeance onto this. Just to avoid Sedge leveling up. We're better off like salvaging. Maybe we can find something playable. But nothing's playable off the salvage. So I guess I'll just develop a Thorny Toad. Just to get some more blockers onto the field. And slowly but surely get towards our ramp. We may resort to playing salvage this turn as well. So we'll do it now. We lose our uh, Bile Feast. No problem. So the Pilford comes off. So we're pretty close to deep. In fact, we are very close to deep. Um, we can attempt to go for the Devourer of Depths here. It's not a bad play for our mana, and dealing with elusive units isn't the worst. It's not unlikely for him to have an answer here, but I should at least attempt to slow down his process. And playing the fish here doesn't really impact our game plan. We should be able to hopefully reach deep next turn. Even if we don't play Nautilus. So he's going for the high roll here, and he gets it. You're unlucky. But we'll, we'll manage. In fact, that really high rolled for him because it also counted as a proc towards my face. A little bit unlucky. Nothing we can't manage to deal with. We're on the attack token, which is good here. So we're better off into... Um, we're better off into his Sejuani. He doesn't want to play Sejuani here, right? You want to play Sejuani next turn coming into the attack token so you can deal with you know, the board more effectively. A little bit of a bummer. We'll be passing here. I don't think I can afford the swing. So he's going to allow me to actually get off my toss here, which is kind of amazing. So we heal up, heal up, take damage, heal. This looks good. This now makes my turn next turn a lot easier. I'm not going to say Citrus Courier here wasn't a bad play, but we're, we're, we are getting Nautilus online very quick. I can still swing here now. We are deep. We'll chomp it with the fish, with the bird. No problem. End round. So he's always got the first action too, which is quite useful. Five head would be the pass it back to me. But he wants to play Sejuani here. He's got the warning shot to level Sejuani to five, but he needs another source of damage to get Sejuani to freeze my board. Five heads if he passes it back to me, but it's pretty unlikely that you'd make that play. You'd be you'd probably just play the Sejuani into freezing up the Devourer Depths so you can take a better trade into it. It's up to him though. Hmm. So we are definitely playing Nautilus here. Blood and salt. And he doesn't exactly have an answer to it. Yeah, obviously we can't do much about this. Here comes the nonsense. We've been pretty lucky to dodge a lot of his pilfered cards if I'm being totally honest. I think we're just going to start playing our dudes, right? Now you might drop the Sejuani to freeze up someone here. Play this first because this makes more sense than dropping down Terror of Tides immediately. I'll pivot my plan if you play Sejuani. But we should go ahead and probably start swinging with stuff so we can start to pressure him. A 
kind of expected here. I wonder who he hits. The elusive? How much mana do I have? I actually have nine mana. So it's kind of like a big turn, right? This is a turn we have to make some decisions. For now, it's gonna swing with these two. The tide rises. Came to wrong place. Could have a frost. So he's got a warning shot actually. This is a bit of a mistake. He's not gonna warning shot. I'll take this opportunity to punish his mistake by not doing that. I think it's the first time. He should be able to play warning shot there and freeze my units though. I'm pretty sure, All right. If I don't need to play a Vengeance this turn, I won't. Maybe play Terror of the Tides now. I'm just gonna start to make a big board. Big, big board. And I should probably put up some chump blockers. He's gonna do something annoying with this. I should get rid of the challenger by playing Withering Whale now. Not really sure what's correct because he always challenge challenges something big. I don't particularly want him to get any value from the Joel Hunters here on the trade. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Withering Whale doesn't exactly find the most amount of value. So kind of playing it like that, kind of feels okay. But then we have like these awkward, you know, bumps on these guys. But 4-1 has challenger. It can set up some weird trades. I'll take my time to get rid of it. So even if he frost bites our board, like we can vengeance the said Giovanni. So he can go warning shot. Yep. Play pilfered goods. Very nice. So the way we kind of get through the rest of this game. So we're passing here. Is that we want to get towards Riptide. And obviously our copies of Nautilus become our Riptide, so it's no problem. So he pulls the elusive unit, that would be the most smart play. So I tank damage from Zap Sprayfin. Yep, pretty standard stuff really. Now that he's committed to his attack, I will go ahead and play Vengeance. And there should be realistically no outplay. Yeah, let's just throw up the Nautilus in case there's any tricks I'm not aware about. That was kind of fair enough, I guess. So I could um fish for the Maokai, right? I can start to destroy my deck, fish for the Maokai. This might be pretty five head. He keeps pilfering me. He's a son of a bitch. I'm tossing good cards at the bottom of my deck. And he keeps stealing my cards. Dive deeper. Mm. This may be a mistake, but I'm, I'm looking to hunt for the Maokai win. Which isn't exactly happening immediately. Should hopefully draw into my stun. I can't really play this. I mean, all I have left is literally. Doesn't make any sense to play this. Probably should have played this instead of Jettison, so that might have been an overlook. But like we're getting we're getting some good cards here. And like if you can't 
you can't do much because he has no sedge on the field. Nothing can block. The game's just over, right? I was just fishing for the Riptide to kind of maximize my pressure. Could have gone either way. Kind of makes his pilfering cards a lot worse. I probably should have, um... Because Pilf... It's annoying because Pilfered's a fast speed. It's a burst speed spell, sorry. So I can't really, like... Because there could be outplay potential with Pilfering in a game... In matchups like this where he plays his fast speed. Uh, Pilfered goods. I go, hey... I don't think so. I'm going to play my Jettison, rip the rest of the cards from my deck, leaving only Maokai and Nautilus, and your Pilfered Goods does nothing. Interesting thought. Anyway, it's a quick one, guys. I really feel like, you know, Deep Sea Monsters has not really been touched. Um, I'm going to share some more footage on the deck, but we'll wait till after the patch. Just want to show you guys a quick game with Sea Monsters, you know. It's quite a fun list. I didn't get to show you my entire list here, but we have a uh, we do have Miss Call on it. Well, I'm sure we'll talk about that in the intro. But um, yeah, excited for the patch. We're not far away, guys. I'll be seeing you soon.